huge difference in your keto journey. So we're going to be discussing these top mistakes people make on keto. Look, I've been following a ketogenic approach since 2014, and I've seen a lot of people make these key mistakes. So if you're somebody who's either new to keto or you kind of feel like your results have slowed down or you hit a keto weight loss stall, keto plateau, this is going to be for you. I'm going to go through five key mistakes to stop making. Let's see if you're making any of these mistakes. And I'm going to give you a bonus tip here. The bonus tip, by the way, is probably the most important tip out of all these tips. So make sure you stick around to watch that. And I encourage you to grab a piece of paper and a pen if you haven't done so already. And let's get into today's presentation. If we're just meeting, my name is Ben Azadi. I'm the best-selling author of Keto Flex, the founder of Keto Camp. Our mission here at Keto Camp is to educate and to inspire 1 billion people on planet Earth. So let's get right into the presentation. What you're going to learn today is, number one, why it's important to love your liver so you could feel like a keto rock star. We're going to talk about the importance of the liver with eating dietary fat and why it's so important to support the liver. I'm going to give you some easy ways to support that liver. I'm going to discuss the 511 rule for breaking a keto weight loss plateau. If you hit a plateau, you want to stick around and watch that part of this video. I'm going to talk about the best fats to eat on keto versus the highly inflammatory fats on keto. I'm going to discuss the best oils to cook with. We're going to discuss the strongest vitamin in the world that I want you to take every single day on your keto journey. And then we're going to open it up to Q&A at the end of the presentation. I like to start the conversation with this quote from Alvin Toffler. He said, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Let's relate this to keto. We've learned a lot about keto. It's very popular. You probably learned a lot about the ketogenic diet, if you want to call it that. A lot of the information out there, we need to actually unlearn and then relearn for incredible results. So this information is going to go against what you probably learned. It's going to be very different, but I believe it'll make a big difference for you on your journey because I believe you are a genius. And Einstein said, intellectuals solve problems, geniuses prevent them. So if we're just meeting, I'm super grateful to meet you. If we're meeting again, hello again. Uh, I'm the founder of Keto Camp. We are a leading authority in keto, intermittent fasting, ancient healing strategies, and our mission is to educate and to inspire a billion people. I'm the author of this book, Keto Flex, which you could find over at ketoflexbook.com. You know, what we have in this day and age is a keto deficiency. And I love this quote from Henderson. He said, ketones are high octane brain fuel throughout much of human evolution. Ketosis likely served as a valuable survival mechanism to fuel brain metabolism during times of food scarcity. Hence, in some ways, the modern diet could be considered keto deficient. So let's talk about the first mistake. The first keto mistake I see people make is not supporting the liver. The liver is a four pound organ or so right here on the right side of your rib cage. And I call the liver the soccer mom organ because she does everything for us. That liver, like soccer moms, do everything. The liver is responsible for a, a lot of things, but primarily when it relates to keto, the liver produces bile. Bile is a green substance that is produced by your liver that acts like a detergent to break down fat. So if you're increasing your dietary fat on keto, but you can't break it down, you're not going to feel that good. And it's responsible for detoxification. So we want to find ways to support this soccer mom organ I call the liver. And how you can do that by increasing your bitters. Everybody write this in the chat box right now. Bitter for the liver. Bitter for the liver. So here's a list of my favorite keto bitters I want you to have on a daily basis, whether you have one or two or all of them. This is going to support your liver to break down fat so you feel amazing with your keto lifestyle. Ginger root, ginger tea. Dandelion greens or dandelion tea. Organic coffee is great for the liver, great for bile production. Artichokes are bile builders and it contains fiber. Lemons and limes, sprinkle that over your keto meats, drink it with water. Radishes, radicchio, cranberries, basil, thyme, rosemary, cilantro, parsley, and my favorite, apple cider vinegar, which thins bile, regulates 
glycemic response. I see you're bitter for the liver comments. Good job, everybody. So incorporate these. And then if you want some more advanced tips for supporting your liver, here are some additional support tips you can do. Uh, you could supplement with a product that supports the liver that has ox bile and other things. So I love systemic formulas products. They make uh, one called LB and L liver, which you can both find over at ketocampsupplements.com. Castor oil packs that you put over your liver and go to bed could be a great way to support the liver. I use the one from Queen of Thrones. And then, of course, coffee enemas could be a great tool you add into the mix to support the liver. The truth is this. Most people have sluggish liver because we have beat up the liver throughout our lifetime through toxins and medications and high processed foods. And what happens is it's not able to produce this thick or excuse me, this thin bile to break down fat and we can't detoxify properly. So make sure you support the liver. That's the first mistake people make on keto. The second mistake people make on keto, they focus too much on weight loss instead of focusing on cellular inflammation. If you know my story, you know that I used to be obese, 250 pounds back in 2008. I never had a weight problem. You don't have a weight problem. It is a weight symptom. You take care of the cause, the symptom goes away by default. Therefore, you don't lose weight to get healthy. You get healthy to lose weight. So I encourage you not to focus on the scale. The scale is going to fluctuate for so many reasons. You know, if you're retaining water weight from your menstrual cycle, it'll show on the scale. If you're retaining water weight from um, too much creatine or soreness from a workout, it'll show on the scale. It's going to give you, it's not the most important marker. The scale is a damn liar. Instead, focus on something that I call NSVs. NSVs are non-scale Victory. So non scale victories include you're measuring your butt, your hips, your thighs, your neck, your arms, getting some measurements done, doing them every 30 days, getting your body fat percentage done, getting your skeletal muscle mass done. What is the percentage? Taking photos of yourself every 30 days. I did that when I was going through my weight loss transformation. Pay attention to how your clothes fit, pay attention to your energy levels your skin complexion, is that improving? Are you getting more better sleep? Or do you have more confidence? These are things that you really want to pay attention to more so than the weight loss. As you get healthy and reduce cellular inflammation, the weight will come off as a side effect. So I encourage you not to make the mistake of just focusing on weight loss. Instead, focus on health. The third mistake is going to be eating the wrong fats. There's a whole set of dietary fats that are inflammatory and they're all keto friendly. They're called PUFAs. And I'm showing you a chart here and you can find this chart on Wikipedia if you just type in on Google comparison of dietary fats and look at the Wikipedia chart. PUFAs are high in linoleic acid. PUFAs stand for, poly, uh, for, um, for polyunsaturated fatty acids and it has a lot of opportunities to attract oxygen and oxidize similar to biting into an apple putting it on the counter, coming back a few hours later and it turns brown. It's kind of what's happening to your cells. So if you see this chart here, the oils that have the most linoleic acid, which is inflammatory, is the oils that have the most blue. So canola, safflower, sunflower, corn, rapeseed in the UK, soybean, and, and others. I'm going to go through a whole comprehensive list for you and give you options. But here are some studies that show how bad these fats are for your human body. So this study showed persistent oxidative stress from PUFAs, often involving enhanced peroxidation of PUFAs in the cell membranes, are known to enhance the development of malignant diseases. Thus, the carcinogenic process, meaning the cancer-causing process, could be initiated or, and or accelerated by lipid peroxidation-induced damage of protein, uh, induced DNA and protein damage. This study looked at linoleic acid and it showed linoleic acid increases endothelial dysfunction and inflammatory marker expression. It also asserts that diabetics have more linoleic acid in their LDL particles than non-diabetics. That is a problem. So as you can see, these studies show that. And then this study was looking at excess linoleic acid and it showed that corn oil changes Cardi uh, induces changes to cardiac fatty acids and causes early diastolic dysfunction without altering systolic 
function. This study is super fascinating. If you, I recommend you look it up. It's called Effects of Fatty Acids on Mitochondrial Implications of Cell Death. What it was looking at was your mitochondria. And if you remember, the mitochondria are the energy power plants of your cells. It produces ATP. It produces energy. It helps you produce ketones. And the healthier your mitochondria, the healthy you are. And this study wanted to look at how different fats are used by the mitochondria. And essentially, the mitochondria cannot use PUFAs for energy production anywhere near the way it can use it for monounsaturated fats and saturated fats. So what we want to do is avoid the following fats on keto, or even if you're not doing keto, avoid the following fats. Canola oil, corn oil, rapeseed oil, soybean oil, cottonseed oil, safflower oil, peanut oil, sunflower oil, grapeseed oil, fish oil is also a PUFA, it's not healthy, and rice bran oil. These are all polyunsaturated fats. We want to swap them for monounsaturated fats and saturated fats, such as the following. Olive oil, great. If you can find a real olive oil, I use the Fresh Press Olive Oil Club over at KetoCampOliveOil.com. Avocado oil is great. Grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, duck fat, lard, coconut oil, and beef tallow. So these are the best oils to cook with, to use in your salad dressings, your dips. Make sure you're consuming these stable fats which support your cell membranes and your mitochondria. Mistake number four on keto. Before I get to mistake number four and outline it, if you're getting any value so far here on YouTube or Facebook, please hit the thumbs up emoji. But mistake number four is not combining keto with intermittent fasting. Yes, you could be doing keto, but if you're snacking all day on keto meals, you're still going to raise glucose and insulin, and you're not going to get the amazing healing benefits of intermittent fasting. And I have several videos on intermittent fasting and what it does, but I want to teach you what's called the 511 rule. Uh, this is this is the 511 rule. So what you want to do is, this is a seven-day protocol, and it's for those who have been doing keto for at least eight weeks. Great way to break a plateau. 511 rule goes as such. Five days out of the week, you're going to follow an 18-6 intermittent fasting schedule with two meals in your six-hour eating window. You're going to have, uh, let's say that looks like 12 to 6 p.m. is your eating window, and then outside of that is your fasting window. For five days, you do that. Then the one is a 24-hour water fast where you just go dinner to dinner or lunch to lunch or even breakfast to breakfast to get more autophagy, which is cellular repair, and more fat loss. The final one is what I call a keto flex day. Keto flex day means no fasting. You have three meals, and you're actually bumping up your carbohydrates to around 100 grams of total carbs, increasing protein, and lowering your fat under 30 grams of total fat. This is outlined in my book, Keto Flex, but this protocol is a great way to mix things up and create um, and change any plateau you might be experiencing on keto. So do the 5-1-1 rule. It is absolutely, it works wonders, especially for those who have been doing keto for several months. Next mistake is not eating enough protein. And I'm going to explain why protein is so important, whether you're doing keto or not. So here are five reasons why protein, more protein is better on keto. Number one, protein can't make you gain weight. It can't make you fat. This study in the Biochemistry of Exercise and Training Handbook said, there is no mechanism for storing excess dietary protein in the body. And any amino acids that are ingested in excess of the immediate requirements are oxidized, meaning burned for energy, not stored as fat and the nitrogen is excreted. Number two, protein is required for fat burning. The study in the Essentials of Biochemistry Handbook, second edition, showed carnitine, which is an essential amino acid in protein, is essential for fat burning. A deficiency in this carnitine automatically means a deficiency in fat burning capability. Number three, protein helps you feel full, helps satiate you, so it prevents you from overeating and snacking, and it helps you fast. It activates hormones and chemicals such as cholecystokinine, leptin, glucagon-like peptide, and peptide YY. These are chemicals that help you feel full. Number four, protein repairs tissues, okay? Vitamins without proteins are insufficient to repair damaged tissues. Number five, 
protein from meat stops bone fractures. Very important if you're over the age, especially if you're over the age of 50. This study looked at 32,000 women, and it showed the women eating the most meat, animal-based protein, were 68% less likely to break a hip. Protein helps heals bones, uh, heal bones 50% faster, according to an article in Prevention, 1998, page 143. So here are some protein myths that I want to debunk. Number one, people think, well, don't I need to eat carbohydrates and get glucose to the brain to function? No, the body can manufacture its own glucose via a process called gluconeogenesis. It does that from the backbone of fat, from lactic acid, and from protein. Will eating protein and animal fat put you at risk for heart disease? No. Uh, this study from JAMA 2005 said in a setting of a healthy diet, healthful diet, partial substitution of carbohydrate with either protein or monounsaturated fats, we just discussed that, can further lower blood pressure, improve lipid levels, and reduce estimated cardiovascular risk. Will too much protein create kidney issues? Well, the basic medical biochemistry clinical handbook on page 653 said, Glutamine, which is an amino acid from protein, removes all of the ammonia, a normal byproduct of protein metabolism from your bloodstream. Protein on its own cannot enter the kidneys. It needs a lot of sugar in it to carry it in. It is carbohydrates that cause kidney damage. It's high carbs and high protein that's the issue, but high protein, high fat, low carbs, not the issue. And this is taken from page 174 of the 24-hour diet by Brian Peskin, MIT researcher. Will too much protein kick you out of ketosis? This is something that is a very popular conversation. And I used to say it will, but now I believe it will not most of the time. According to Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, she's a great researcher, for every 100 grams of dietary protein in the body, the body will generate 60 grams of carbohydrates via gluconeogenesis. However, when you're in ketosis, the gluconeogenesis that's created will just refill your glycogen stores. So for most people, more protein will not kick you out of ketosis. The extra glucose will not kick you out of ketosis. It'll refill your muscle glyco glycogen stores and your liver glycogen stores. Now, caveat, you want to keep your fats up and also avoid too many BCAs, especially during an intermittent fast. Will protein remove calcium from the bone? This is a common misconception. Well, according to the Guyton Hall, Guyton and Hall textbook of medical physiology, 13th edition, it says protein functions in these cells to transport calcium into the cell cytoplasm. The rate of calcium absorption seems to be directly proportional to the quantity of this calcium binding protein. Does a high protein diet cause gout, gout flare-ups? Gout is very painful and high protein is not the cause of gout. The root cause of gout is inflammation and inflammation is primarily caused from high consumption of fructose and sucrose, so sugar, high consumption of alcohol, those bad fats, the vegetable oils, sugar grains, and tap water, drinking too much tap water and also excess toxicity. Does eating meat cause cancer? Does eating red meat cause cancer? Well, the risk of cancer and other disorders linked to meat, if you look at the studies, it's not linked to meat itself. Rather, it's from the hormones, pesticides, and other additives associated with it. So if you're eating red meat, you want clean, organic, grass-fed, and grass-finished red meat that will lower risk of cancer, not increase it. The Medical News Today 2007 study showed recent studies published in the Journal of Cancer Science have disproved the myth that consumption of red meat increases colorectal cancer. This study also showed that intake of beef or pork processed meat, uh, total fat, saturated fat, and PUFAs showed no clear association with overall uh, subsite specific risk of colorectal cancer specifically. Our findings do not support the hypothesis that consumption of red meat increases colorectal cancer risk. Let's talk about the bonus tip here, and then I'm going to open it up to Q&A. If you're getting any value so far, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. The bonus tip is the biggest tip of them all, because if you don't have the bonus tip locked in, 
all the previous five tips will not even work to the extent that you want it to work. So bonus mistake I see people make is avoiding the inner work. When you think about the inner work, you think about inner sizing before exercising. Let's talk about that real quick. There is your conscious mind and there is your subconscious mind. The conscious mind is only responsible for about five to 10% of your results in life, including your health results. But it's the subconscious mind that's running the show. And the subconscious mind accepts everything as truth. And it starts with your thoughts. Neville Goddard said, we are only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. Weakness of attention. We're not able to focus on one thing. Poverty of imagination. Stinking thinking. If you're thinking... If you're thinking is stinking, your dreams are shrinking. Health dreams, financial dreams, relationship dreams. Poverty of imagination is what limits us. Let me ask you this question for those on here. How many thoughts per day does the average human being think? How many thoughts per day does the average person think? Let me know in the chat box. How many thoughts per day does the average person think on a daily basis? What do you think the answer is as I drink my coffee? Brian and Jill says 700. Good to see you, Brian and Jill. Terry says 60,000. Zipporah says 60,000. I see 7,000. I see 21,000. So the average person thinks 60,000 thoughts per day. Those are a lot of thoughts. And it's estimated that 90% of the thoughts we had have today are the same thoughts from yesterday. It's typically negative thoughts. And whatever you feed your subconscious mind manifests. And you don't get what you want in life, you get what you are. What you are are those 60,000 thoughts. So how can we change those thoughts? You change those thoughts by becoming aware of those thoughts. When you're walking your dog, when you're washing dishes, dishes, when you're brushing your teeth, what are you thinking? Are you thinking, I can never lose the weight. I'm not healthy. I... Uh, I'm ugly, I'm stupid, whatever the stinking thinking thought is, your greatest power as a human being is to change the thought to a powerful thought. The more you start thinking about the things you want to work for you, the more you get things to work for you. This is a universal law. Whether you believe in it or not, it's a universal law. What you feed energy to expands. So I don't, you know, if you think this is woo-woo, you, you might not believe in the universal law of gravity, but you know, I hold up this Sharpie and I let it go. Whether you believe in gravity or not, you'll see that it's real. It's the same thing with your thoughts. The more you can start, the more you can really concentrate on self-healing thoughts. I'm gonna give you an affirmation I use every day. So write this down in your notes and read it every single day. The health I seek is now seeking me. I remove any blockages between us. Say that every single day. Write it on a notepad. Read it first thing in the morning. Read it right before bed. Repeat it in your head all day long. The health that I seek is now seeking me. I remove any blockages between us. The more you could control that, the subconscious mind goes to work for you. And there's a part of the brain that starts to seek out all the things you're feeding it. It's called the reticular activation system. On top of that, we also want to take the strongest vitamin in the world. Now, this vitamin is responsible for reducing inflammation in your body. It creates more happiness, and it's the strongest vitamin in the world. And this vitamin is called vitamin G, okay? Vitamin G, studies have shown, Dr. Joe Dispenza showed that vitamin G, when you take vitamin G, it's responsible for 1,200 different chemical reactions that go on in the body that begin to repair and restore when you take this vitamin. Vitamin G is gratitude. What you appreciate, appreciates. And what you think about, and what you think about, you bring about. So I encourage you, if you are not in the practice of daily gratitude, get into the practice of daily gratitude. Watch what it does to your health your relationships, your happiness, your vitality. 
it's impossible to be pissed off and grateful at the same time. So what I do is I write down 10 things I'm grateful for right before bed, and I'll write down 10 things I'm grateful for in the morning. And then I'm always saying I'm so happy and grateful for this. I'm so happy and grateful for you on Instagram, for you on TikTok, for you on Facebook, on YouTube, and those watching from all across the world. Gratitude changes everything. What you appreciate appreciates. And you start to change your thoughts when you start to practice gratitude. And if you could change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Dr. Wayne Dyer said it beautifully. And as you make these changes, you're going to see when you start eating healthy and practicing intermittent fasting and adopting healthier lifestyles, when you change, you become a threat to everybody in your life who does not change. It triggers them. It's easier for them to put you pull you back down to their level than it is for them to change. It kind of points a mirror to what they're not changing in their life. So the formula, because when you start to make the changes, when you start to embark on new goals, whether it's a keto goal, a fat loss goal, a relationship goal, when you embark on a new goal, that goal is going to stretch you. And if your goal doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. If your goal is easy to do, it's not big enough. You want a goal that scares the crap out of you. You want a goal that's worth that's w- worth failing for. But it's going to suck. It's going to challenge you. It's going to change you. You're going to have people make comments. When you go to the gym and start working out, you're sore. It sucks. When you go to a party and there's pizza and beer, but you decide to stay clean and your friends make fun of you, that's going to suck. I encourage you to embrace the suck. Because my formula for success in all areas of life is suck, 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 cess. Embrace the suck. Keep pushing forward. On the opposite end of that is greatness. And you have greatness inside of you. Your human body is incredible. It has an innate intelligence eager to go to work for you and heal your body, repair your body. But you got to get these principles in order. So I gave you the keto tips. Now I'm giving you the inner sizing tips This is super important that a lot of people fail because it's easy to do and it's easy not to do, like Jim Rohn said. So if you want to learn, oh, actually, before I get to that, when we talk about success, success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. That word ideal, that's a goal that you have fallen in love with. It could be a goal to get your blood markers in order. It could be a relationship goal. It could be being the best mom in the world, best dad in the world, best soccer coach in the world. Whatever your unique ideal is, it's up to you to determine that. As long as you're progressing towards that goal, you're successful. You're going to be happier. You're going to be healthier. As long as you never give up. As long as you close the gap between where you are right now and where you want to be. It's not about hitting the goals. It's not. It's never about hitting your goals. It's about who you have to become on your way to the goal. The changes you make, the relationships you create, the people you help. That's what it's about. I love that definition because it means you can never fail as long as you never give up. Yeah, there's going to be setbacks. It's never about the setbacks. It's always about the getbacks. Setbacks are setups for something great. And you have greatness inside of you. If you want to learn more about the keto part, I'm going to be delivering a free, a free webinar coming up in a few days where I'm going to teach how to go in and out of ketosis. So we'll teach some more keto flexing principles. We'll dive deeper into clean keto versus dirty keto. We'll get into some artificial sweeteners, the role of intermittent fasting, and, and so much more. And it says 2021, it should say 2022. So if you want to get signed up for my free webinar, it's ketosismasterclass.com ketosismasterclass.com. Register for that. I want to see you on there and giving away hundreds of dollars of free gifts for those who attend. It's going to be absolutely, absolutely incredible. Uh, Jude, the, uh, what was the comment here? Was it Jude? No, it was Joanne. Hey, Joanne. So the statement, the affirmation was the health I seek is now seeking me. I remove any blockages between us. The health I seek is now seeking me. I remove any blockages between us. Let's do some Q&A here. Jill says, do you recommend protein cycling? I do. 
you don't want to have protein all the time, but having days where you fast and having days where you feast is a great approach because protein activates mTOR. mTOR could be healing in spurts, but too much mTOR could create problems, but you could balance that out with autophagy. So with exercise, you get autophagy and intermittent fasting. So I like protein cycling. Yes. What if you had a bad back and can't exercise? Then do all the other things that are in your control. Work on your back. Maybe if you could walk, go for walks, and eventually let's get your back back to 100%, and then you could add in the exercise. That made me laugh out loud. Suck, suck, success. Thanks, Ben. Love that. Go ahead, James. You could use that, my friend. Good to see you, Dan. Good to see you, Monica. Okay, I feel bad, not because I have been using it every day for a long time. Do you have any suggestions for other than stevia? Yeah, so you could use my favorite alternatives for sweeteners are going to be stevia, monk fruit, erythritol, swerve, xylitol. Those are much safer. Whatever happened to people who fast making the body go into survival mode, which was bad years ago, the body is not going to go into this mythical survival mode unless you're excessively fasting, which I don't recommend. But the body is very smart. When you're in a fasted state, it raises something called counter-regulatory hormones. These are your sympathetic tone. So cortisol, glucagon, human growth hormone is activated. And it's your body's way of literally thinking, oh, crap, we're going through a famine. We haven't eaten or, or had food in 18 hours, 20 hours. Let's pump the body full of energy so it could stay alert, focused, energized, so it could go out there and hunt and kill in order to stay alive. So it doesn't store go into survival mode. It goes into let's find food mode, and, and it, it pumps you full of energy. And that energy could be used just for crushing your day. Bitter for the liver. I love your comments. Tracy, good to see you on here. I love the comments. Thoughts on Truvani protein powder. Truvani protein powder. Let me look it up. Truvani protein powder. What are the ingredients? Let's see. Yeah, it was a, it was a myth, Eddie. Exactly. You're right. Um, Truvani. Let's see. Let me share my screen here on YouTube so you can see what I'm looking at. So let's find the ingredients. Um, is it vegan? Is it dairy free? I just want to see the, why do they make it so hard to see the ingredients? Shop plant-based protein. Uh, let's see ingredients okay six simple ingredients uh pea protein chia seeds pumpkin seeds alkalized cacao vanilla powder and monk fruit usda organic great yeah looks okay uh just keep in mind that plant-based protein is not complete and it's not as absorbable as animal-based protein. These do have anti-nutrients in them as well. Uh, I like that it has it has clean ingredients and it's organic, but animal-based protein is going to be far superior, like bone broth protein or collagen protein would be much, much better. But this is not, this is not bad. How much protein a day is good? Good question. So you want to get, at the minimum, most days, one gram of protein per protein. Uh, one gram of protein per pound of lean body weight. So whatever your ideal body weight is, let's say you weigh 180 pounds, but your, you know, your goal is 135 pounds. So that's your ideal body weight. So you take one gram of protein for your ideal body weight per ideal per pound of ideal body weight. So that's 135 grams of protein. If your ideal body weight is 115 pounds and 115 grams of protein, what should we eat? Keto meals, according to macros, are not. Um, you want to focus on the macro carbohydrates and keep it below 50 grams for the day, and that will get you into ketosis. 
and make sure those carbohydrates come from green leafy vegetables. What's your opinion on cow's milk? Not a big fan of it. If you could find raw cow milk from A2 cows, much, much better. But most people have issues with cow milk. Your go-to for improving gut health. Thanks. Uh, carnivore diet is great for the gut. Intermittent fasting is great for the gut. Like a 24-hour fast once a week has been shown by MIT research to, in, to strengthen intestinal stem cells. Eating organic, uh, staying away from gluten, staying away from dairy, all that will help with the fast. Is coffee okay with intermittent fasting? For the most part, yes. For some people, it'll create a glucose response, so you might want to test your glucose to see if that happens for you. Maca root is great um, for an adaptogenic herb powder. I like it. Not every day, but from time to time, I like maca. Hi from India. Love your session. Thank you, Aman. Melody says, I have a different question. I found a doctor who won labs I want. Where can I find a video on recommended labs? Um, in my Keto Camp Academy, I have a whole list of recommended labs. Uh, I don't know if there's a, there, there is a video. If you just go to my YouTube channel and type in like lab work or blood work, you might find it somewhere on there. But in the Academy, we have a detailed list. While eating... When, my eating window, intermittent fasting, how many meals should I take to get the maximum benefits? I'm insulin resistance, male 40. Yeah, two meals is good during your eating window. I like that approach. Uh, I like creatine. Creatine is great. The more consistent you take creatine, the better the results. I'm a big, there's a lot of research showing creatine is helpful. I've been doing 24 hour fasting for 110 days. Yay or nay? That's too much OMAD, too much 24 hour fasting. Eat. You're not, getting enough, you're not going to be able to get enough protein that way. So I would say nay. That's too much 24-hour fasting. I mean, congrats to your discipline. It's amazing, but you need more protein. You need more mTOR. You need more feasting. How much fat grams weight? I'm not sure what the question is, Gretchen. How do people do it without dairy? You would switch over to like a sheep dairy or a goat dairy. Those are fine. And if you're going to do cow dairy, just make sure it's organic grass-fed. If you can find it raw, even better. If you can find A2, also great. Can you say a little bit more about carnivore diet? Yeah, carnivore diet is great. I have an entire chapter on it. Carnivore diet is like essentially an elimination diet. It gets rid of all of these plants that have anti-nutrients and what's called plant toxins like lectins and oxalates and phytates and many, many more. So it's a great way to heal the gut. Um, there's four different levels to it. I talk about all four in the book and it, I have some videos on my YouTube channel as well. I do it for 30 to 40 days, three to four times a year. How long can you do 18-6? 18-6 is a sustainable approach as long as you're getting enough protein in your six hour eating window, Lauren. I do it most days. My book is out, Jude. It's available on Amazon right now. I'm paperback and Kindle. Next month, it'll be available on Audible. Finally, it's done. So ketoflexbook.com is where you can get the book. What are your thoughts on products called keto capsules? I would be very cautious of them. They might have artificial ingredients or they're probably saying exog exogenous ketones to get your ketones up, but I don't like to rely on keto capsules. I stay away from them. For your bodybuilder, you always hear six, six meals a day. How do you do that with 16-8? So Frankie, great question because this Monday coming up, February 28th, I'm releasing a brand new episode on my Keto Camp podcast with Robert Sykes, who's a natural ketogenic bodybuilder who practices intermittent fasting. He explains how to do it. Keep in mind though, being a bodybuilder and, and having goals to put on as much muscle as possible is usually not synonymous with having goals for health and longevity. So you got to determine what your goals are, but it can be done. Watch or listen to that interview on Monday on the Keto Camp podcast when it comes out. My opinion on Hashimoto's thyroiditis is that it can be reversed. I've seen it be reversed. My mom actually has Hashimoto's thyroiditis. You want to uh, make sure you're really avoiding gluten and cow dairy, maybe doing some carnivore and some keto flexing and also doing some heavy metal detoxing the right way. I'm taking a group through a heavy metal detox right now. It's closed. We're full, but I'm going to do another one in the summer. Mercury has an affinity for the thyroid, and it's a very common reason people experience Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is a slowed thyroid due to the body attacking 
the thyroid gland. When you say I can't get enough protein on my OMAD days, do you mean the body can't absorb that protein? I thought that was a myth. No, the, the, that's not what I mean. It's going to be very difficult. Let's say, I don't know what your protein requirements are. Let's say it's 130 grams. How are you going to eat 130 grams of protein in one meal? You're not going to feel that. It's going to be very difficult. You're not going to feel great. It's, it's going to be very challenging. So that's what I mean by it. Uh, yeah, I have Raynaud's. I don't know if you knew that, but I have Raynaud's, which is an autoimmune disease. And I can tell you that my Raynaud's has improved tremendously over the years with keto flexing, with carnivore. But the biggest bang for my buck was doing a heavy metals detox. So um, I used to get flare ups almost every day. Now I get them maybe once a month or once every other month. I'm determined to shut down my Raynaud's autoimmune genes for good, which you all can do. Autoimmune is something you could reverse permanently. Your body's amazing. You just got to keep identifying the interference and removing it. So Raynaud's could be really crippling and it could lead to something called scleroderma, which is life-threatening. So carnivore is great for Raynaud's, fixing the gut, uh, eating organic non-GMO foods. And the biggest thing is a heavy metals detox done the right way. I am taking a group through a heavy metals detox right now and I'm going to do another group in the summer. How much fat to go along with protein recommendations? Just get enough fat that eat the natural fat that comes with the protein. No need to add extra fat, especially if your goal is to burn body fat, Gretchen. Keep the questions coming. I'm going to answer a few more here. What's the best foods to snack on? Protein, fat, fiber. So macadamia nuts, avocados, hard-boiled eggs. Paleo Valley makes some great beef sticks. My favorite go-to on-the-go snacks. Uh, if you go to paleovalley.com and check out their beef sticks, Keto Camp 1.5 at checkout for them for 15% off. Top three supplements, that's very hard. I, I would say Ion, Ion Gut Health helps close your tight junction. So Ion Gut Health, you can find over at ketocampsupplements.com, I-O-N Gut Health. A magnesium is important. I use upgraded formulas, nano magnesium particles, upgradedformulas.com, Keto Camp at checkout for 15% off. Uh, and then I would say a vitamin D complex, not like a, a quality vitamin D complex, meaning it has all the fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K with it. Uh, those might be my top three, but there's so many good ones. Your podcast, your podcast you're having on Monday, is that on YouTube? Uh, the one is not, that one's not going to be on YouTube on Monday. That's going to be on my keto camp podcast. So whatever podcast platform you listen to Apple, Google, Stitcher, um, SoundCloud, Spotify, it'll be on there. It'll be on my YouTube channel later on, but Keto Camp Podcast Monday. On a tight budget, ha hard to even afford regular meat, let alone non-GMO. What can I eat when I'm on a budget? Do the best you can with your budget. Cool thing about intermittent fasting is that you save money. So maybe you could take the money you save from fasting and apply it to healthier foods. But eating organic non-GMO is so important. I always say either you pay the farmer now, you choose to pay the farmer now, or you are forced to pay the doctor later. So health is not an expense. I say that with love, but health is not an expense. Health is an investment. And your health is your wealth. It is the greatest investment you can make because when you're healthy and energized and your brain's working the right way, you're more productive, you're more creative, you get more things done, you earn more money. So we got to take care of the health and then everything else comes in. So I would say do the best you can, but get as, as practice fasting and save that money and then use that money for higher quality food. Thank you for the roses on TikTok. Y'all are awesome. Is it okay to snack when doing 18-6? I, I don't during your six hour eating window, there's no need to snack if you eat enough protein in those two meals. I have rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and Hashimoto's off meds with normal CRP for four years now. Awesome, Tracy, that's great. Good job. Do you do cold water therapy? Thoughts on it? Cold water therapy is great. It's what's called a hormetic um, stressor, hormesis. That word hormesis is very important. If you haven't studied that word, go study it. Hormesis means you apply a stress, the body adapts, and the body gets stronger. 
So cold water exposure is is that it it raises it, it creates your body it tells your body you're going through the ice age if you will. And now mitochondria gets the mitochondria that are strong get stronger, mitochondria that are weak go away. Uh, but you gotta kind of you don't want to do too much. You want to make sure you find your hermetic zone. So I think cold water exposure is great, whether it's like cryotherapy or an ice bath or a cold plunge, you're going to feel invigorated or a cold shower. It also helps you burn fat because it activates brown fat, which is great and helps you burn more calories, which is great and helps you just feel energized, which is also great. The link for my upcoming webinar is ketosismasterclass.com. Yeah, Becky, I know you love the cold because you're always sharing your walking in the morning barefoot in your 30 degree, 40 degree temperature. That's a cold exposure and hormesis in itself. So I always see that, Becky. You're on top of it. Um, I had Cushing's syndrome, so I have to dip below my ideal weight to get rid of the extra pouch. Pre-menopause, 49 years old, keto six years, haven't changed a thing, gaining weight. Yeah, Jamie, you um, six years for keto is a little, it's a little too long. Uh, I applaud your discipline and determination, but it's time for some keto flexing. Your body is going to preservation mode with that long. Uh, I'm not a fan of long-term ketosis. So keto flexing, if you want to, I have a, a chapter 12 talks about how to do keto for women and perimenopause, postmenopause, and cycling women. So chapter 12 would be what you want to read, uh, ketoflexbook.com. Yeah, Italo, I think you your, your question about the kidney, um, I went over that with some slides earlier. You might have missed it. So watch the replay. I went into some research on protein in the kidneys so you could see that. It's the issue of protein in itself is not hard in the kidneys. It's when you combine protein and carbohydrates that's the problem but watch the replay and you can see the slide that i brought up with the studies oh awesome lab mom thanks for getting the book you are awesome for those who got the keto flex book if you haven't left it a rating and review on amazon please leave it a rating review on amazon it makes a big difference and it shows it uh amazon to more amazon shows it to more people intermittent fasting is so easy i can't stop now i <laughs> tell me about it my problem is i gotta i gotta get enough protein so i gotta you know make sure i feast as much as I fast, that's for everybody. The feasting is as important as the fasting. Is uh, 94 women do intermittent fasting? Yeah, uh, as long as you're having enough protein in your eating window, it can be done. Yes. 94 years old, that's amazing. That's okay. Uh, we watch it and you'll see the slide on there. All right, my friends, hopefully you get signed up for the keto webinar I have coming up. It's ketosismasterclass.com. Share this video with a friend, somebody you know who's doing keto. Please hit the thumbs up button on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube. Go subscribe to the Keto Camp podcast. We release new podcast episodes every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Keto Flex will be available on Audible next month. In the meantime, you can get it on paperback and Kindle over at ketoflexbook.com. Calm. Thank you so much for joining me today. Every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern time, I go live with you. So I'll see you next Wednesday. But in between that, I'll have a lot of new videos. And if you're on TikTok, we're doing some cool things on TikTok. We have a big community on TikTok, over 220,000 followers on TikTok. Follow me on TikTok. My handle is at the Ben Azadi, which is just my name, at the Ben Azadi on TikTok. And uh, I'd love to see you on there. So have a great day. Thanks for joining me today. And I'll see you all very soon. Stay in gratitude. Get that vitamin G.